The English Roses by Madonna. Have you ever heard of the English Roses? Here is what they are not. A box of chocolates, a football team, flowers growing in the garden. What they are is this. Four little girls named Nicole, Amy, Charlotte and Grace. Here are some things you should know about them. They go to the same school and live in the same neighbourhood. They play the same games, read the same books and like the same boys. They have picnics in the summer and ice skating parties in the winter. They are particularly glued to each other at the hip. Most of all, they love to dance. It all sounds so perfectly fun and nice, and in many ways it was. But there was only one problem. They were a little bit jealous of another girl in the neighbourhood. Her name was Bina, and here are some things you should know about her. She was very, very beautiful. She had long, silky hair and skin like milk and honey. She was an excellent student and very good at sports. She was always kind to people. She was special. But she was sad, because even though she was the most beautiful girl anyone had ever seen, she was also very lonely. She had no friends, and everywhere she went... She was alone. By now, you are probably wondering, what's the big deal? If she was so nice, why didn't the English Roses invite her over for a cup of tea? Listen, I already told you why. Because they were a little jealous. Well, maybe more than a little. Haven't you ever been green with envy? Or felt like you were about to explode if you didn't get what somebody else had? If you say no, you are telling a big fat fib and I am going to tell your mother. Now stop interrupting me. You see, the English roses wanted to be friendly and they knew that Bina was lonely but they could not bring themselves to be nice to her because everywhere they went, this is what they heard. What a beauty she is. She shines like a star. That Bina is something else. When Nicole and Amy and Charlotte and Grace heard people speak, This way, about Bina, they always felt like they were going to be sick. This is what they would say. Hmm, how could anyone be so perfect? No one ever says that about us. It's not fair to have so much. Huh, let's pretend we don't know her. Sorry, let's pretend we don't see her when she walks by. Let's push her into the lake. And that is what they did. No, silly, not the lake part. The pretending not to see her part. And so time went by and the English roses continued to have fun with each other while Bina remained alone. One night, all the girls were having a sleepover party at Nicole's house. Her mother peeked her head around the corner and said, Do you mind if I come in and have a chat with you all? Don't worry, Mum, we're going to bed we're going to go to bed soon, said Nicole. Just let us finish our pillow fight. That is not why I came in here, 
her mother replied. I want to talk to you about Bina. She lives down the street. She goes to your school. She likes to do all the same things that you do. And yet you never invite her over or make any effort to be friendly with her. There was a long pause. The English roses looked around the room at one another. Amy was the first to speak. She thinks she's God's gift to creation just because she's beautiful. Yes, why should we invite her over? She gets enough attention already, Charlotte joined in. It's not that we don't like her, said Nicole. It's just that she's probably stuck up. Pretty girls usually are. Hmm, Nicole's mum thought about this for a moment and then she said, I think you girls are being unfair. She looks like she could really use a friend and you haven't even had a conversation with her. How do you know what kind of a person she is? How would you like it if people decided whether they were going to be nice to you based on how you look. The girls knew she had a point, but they didn't want to say it. Suddenly, they didn't feel like having a pillow fight. Please think about what I've said, said Nicole's mother, and she stood up and kissed them all goodnight. When her mother was gone, Nicole turned out the light and the girls lay awake in the dark for quite a while thinking about what Nicole's mother had said. No one said a word and eventually they fell asleep. And while they were sleeping, they each had the same dream. And here is what they dreamed. All four of them were having a picnic in the park. Complaining, as usual, about how beautiful Bina was and how she got too much attention and how unfair it was for them when suddenly a fairy godmother appeared. She was short and plump and very jolly looking. Listen, why am I telling you this? Don't you know what a fairy godmother looks like? Anyway... She landed right on top of Charlotte's sandwich. Oh, excuse me. Is that pumpernickel bread? She said, sniffing the air. I just love the smell of pumpernickel. The girls sat and stared at her with their mouths open because they had never seen a fairy godmother before. said the fairy mother, clearing her throat. Now, where was I? Oh, yes, I couldn't help but overhear your conversation and it sounds like you are all quite dissatisfied with who you are, which makes me very unhappy. I would like to offer you the opportunity to be someone else. What do you mean? asked Charlotte, pulling her sandwich out from underneath the fairy godmother's bottom. (gasps) What I mean, replied the fairy, and please do not interrupt me, is is that if you are jealous of Bina, then by all means you should be someone else. In fact, perhaps one of you would even like to trade places with Bina. Oh, that's silly. How could we possibly be someone else, interrupted Grace. Well, if you would just let me finish, harumphed the fairy. When I sprinkle my magic dust all over you, you can be whoever you'd like. But first, you might want to fly over to Bina's house with me and spend some time with her, just to make sure that her life is to your liking. Or... Anyone else's, for that matter? The girls all gulped and nodded. And finally, Nicole said, 
but, but, but she's, she'll see us looking through the window and she'll think we're burglars or something. Yes, she might call the police, added Amy. Oh, nonsense, scoffed the fairy, nibbling at Charlotte's chocolate chip cookie. When I sprinkle you with my magic fairy dust, you will be invisible and you can go wherever you like and no one will ever see you. The girls sat there speechless. Huh, which didn't happen very often, I can assure you. Well, don't just sit there stuffing your faces, tutted the fairy, stuffing her face. My time is valuable. (gasps) The girls leaned forward and whispered quietly for a moment. They decided that even though the fairy took their cookies without asking, she seemed rather harmless. And anyway, they couldn't turn down the chance to spy on Bina without her knowing they were there. So they asked to be sprinkled with fairy dust and off they flew to Bina's house. Suddenly they found themselves sitting around Bina's kitchen table and there on her hands and knees was Bina scrubbing the floor. Sweat was dripping from her forehead and she looked very tired. All at once her father came into the room and said, It's getting late, Bina. When you've finished scrubbing the floor, I think you should start cooking dinner. I'm going outside to fix the car. Bina smiled and said, OK, Papa. Then he was gone. Bina proceeded to do a multitude of tasks. When she, flin- when she finished cleaning the floor, she peeled the potatoes, she chopped the onions, she set the table, she scaled the fish, she washed, she ironed the clothes, and finally, she emptied the trash. The English roses couldn't believe their eyes. They had never seen a girl work so hard in their lives. She reminds me of Cinderella, said Amy. She looks like she hasn't combed her hair in a week, remarked Charlotte. Where's her mother, asked Nicole. She doesn't have a mother, replied the fairy godmother. She lives all alone with her father and he works all day. So when she comes home from school, she has to clean the house, wash the clothes and cook the dinner. You mean she does all all that by herself asked grace yes you ninnies asked answered the fairy i just said she lives alone with her father well what happened to her mother asked lynn nicole she died a very long time ago poor thing sighed the fairy and you know bina has no friends so she spends all her time on her own Well, come along, girls. Would you like to see what her bedroom looks like? The English roses all stood up to go, but they felt bad about leaving Bina behind all by herself with so much work. Oh, don't dawdle, ladies. I've got places to go and people to meet, said the fairy impatiently. So off they went to see Bina's room, to see if Bina's room was to their liking. They were not prepared for what they saw. A simple room with a bed, a chest of drawers, a shelf full of books. There was, of course, one doll, but only one. Can you believe it? Well, you'd better, because I'm telling you. There was one picture in a frame on the bedside table, and all the girls gathered around it to see who was in the picture. It was a beautiful photograph of Bina's mother. Nicole's eyes began to fill with tears. Oh, I feel so bad, she said. It must be awful not to have a mother. She must feel terribly lonely, said Charlotte. And we haven't been nice to her. Well, what do you say? interrupted the fairy godmother. Anyone want to trade places? There was a long pause. The English roses looked at one another 
It was so quiet that you could hear a pin drop. I think we've made a terrible mistake, said Grace. I can't imagine living without a mum. I don't want to do so many chores, said Amy, and I don't know the first thing about cooking. Well, is there anyone else you'd like to be? asked the fairy godmother. Perhaps in another neighbourhood, another city, or even country? I'm sure I could arrange it for you. Please just let us go home to our own cosy beds and our families whom we love, begged Nicole. Yes, we want to go home, cried the rest of the girls. Suit yourself, said the fairy, but in the future you might think twice before grumbling that someone else has a better life than you. And as I said before, I am a busy woman. In the blink of an eye, the English roses were back in bed, fast asleep. When morning came, the girls awoke, relieved to find that they were still themselves. They told one another about their dream, and they promised each other that, from that day on, they would be kinder to Bina and stop complaining about their own lives. First, they invited Bina to a tea party and then they started walking to school with her and not long after that, they were doing homework together. Bina even taught them how to bake an apple pie. <laughs> they soon found out that she was very likeable indeed. They grew to love her like a sister and often went to her house to help her with her chores. Time went by, and soon everywhere the English roses went, Bina went with them. And you're not going to believe this, but people in the neighbourhood started talking about them. And this is what they said. Those English roses are really special. What beautiful girls. They'll grow up to be incredible women one day. And do you know what? They did. If you don't believe me, then go and find out for yourself. I didn't make this up. The end.